So I positioned the gasket there with the um, as best aligned as it's possible, and I can place the ring over this. The ring gets centered by the four plastic things, and it, that's not really very tight. It has a little play, and that gets nice and and greased and it sort of adheres itself. Good. I've also just decided I'm going to add grease to the other side because this is moving more than I expected. Now we're going to grease our little brake crescents. We do that only on the on the very edge where it engages that flange on the ring and that looks something like this. I can see a little wear mark where it's worked against that. I just want to fill in those tool marks, just the lightest little film here. We'll get the brakes screwed down at least lightly. We don't have to set the tension right now, but we'll just get them screwed down. And the trick here for this is getting that groove to engage the edge and lowering it down into position. The washer in place. There. And so because this is in a groove, you can get this down nice and tight. And the lock washer does its job holding it on. Well, it's time to put the control box in place. Uh, this is your last chance if you need to tidy anything up in here before the control box goes in, but you're pretty much in good shape. I do recommend with these two lower tension screws, setting them to a um, very light tension and then let the upper screws do the job. And the reason for that is with the control box in place and the finder in place, that basically blocks your access to some of those screws. So now's your chance to do it. And so we can just get those gently. Oh, that already had some good tension on it, I think. Tight, back it off. So it's just a little, that one was loose. A little tension there. Well, I believe I've got them all seated, so it's firm to turn, and if we want to loosen it up, we're going to be doing that up on these top ones, what will end up being the top ones by the eyepiece, where we have good access. And then it's nice and light, so all of our adjustment is done here. These just provide a basic amount of drag. Now we have a little trick to illustrate how this this little pin goes into this little hole for the mechanism that shifts the finder. I'll start by putting a little bit of grease on that just for good measure. It's a lot more grease on my toothpick than I need. And see if we can get this oriented so that the camera can see what I'm doing. First thing is we get the focus rod to pop out. That did that nicely. The next thing is we look inside. We can just let it set down, but somewhere that pin's going to want to find its, its hole. And, um, and you can see that bar, but you can't quite see where it's going. And now you can. So I'm going to keep turning that so you can see what's going on. Do this all with one hand. If I can do it with one, you can do it with two. And you want to get that pin aligned in the hole. And I'm almost there. And maybe you want to believe me that if I go in there with a little screwdriver, uh, or I'm sorry, with a, with a toothpick, so I'm not scratching things up. 
I can just simply take that um, take that plate and shift it downward while I'm pivoting and I can steer it in place. But I'm not going to be able to do that on camera unless I get really lucky with the lighting. Maybe I can. First I'll try it without a toothpick. with Come on, almost there. Pop did it. And it's not held down, but I can at least get verification that that's operating properly. Ta-da! Now we simply reinstall our four control box screws and then we'll continue with the um, we can put the focus knob back on and we can wait to collimate the mirror until it's back in the mount um, if we if we weren't doing a big project on this, it'd already be in the mount. And use your best judgment with tightening up these screws and following a pattern to work around without tightening anyone up too tight. If you have a very old scope that was made in the 50s, that base plate is made out of a synthetic material, not aluminum, and that means that um, it's pretty easy to strip out, so be careful with that. You'll even have different length control box screws in different locations.